Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Woolsey. Have you ever heard of pop art? Today's project has to do with pop art, which was a very important movement in art history where people started looking at art in a whole new way. Our featured artist today is Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol put pop art on the map. He helped develop pop art, one of the best known and most fun periods of art ever. He may have been the first and only art superstar. Andy Warhol's best known paintings and prints are usually brightly colored. They have simple, strong shapes that really stand out. Sometimes he would use repetition in his work by repeating the same image over and over again. Andy often showed things that were a popular part of everyday modern life, like supermarket products and rock stars. The name pop art comes from the word popular. Andy Warhol used the method of silk screen printing to create his artwork. A silk screen is a piece of mesh fabric held taut in a frame. Some of the holes in the fabric's mesh are clogged up to prevent the ink from passing through. When the silk screen is placed against a workpiece, the ink is squeegeed across the screen surface. Ink is deposited on the workpiece wherever the screen was not clogged. Those of you that wear t-shirts with designs printed on them, that is called screen printing. Screen printing is very similar to the same process that Andy Warhol used in his prints. For our project today, you're gonna need a couple materials. You are going to need a really kind of thick piece of cardboard. It doesn't have to be really big, maybe like a six by six piece. You're also going to need a longer, and this can be just any type of paper, cut to six and a half by 18. You're gonna need that piece of paper. We're also going to be needing just pencils and erasers. We're gonna be needing some fluorescent paints today. Um, any type of paint that you can get, a watercolor would work, or what I have is a tempera paint, and that will work also. Um, if you have acrylics, those would work. Oils would even work, but it's gonna take a really long time for those to dry, so you might wanna stay away from those. Uh, we will need a little bit of glue, a big black kind of chunky marker will be important for today's lesson. Um, of course, brushes, and then my favorite, glitter. We will need some glitter for this project, so you can break out the glitter. Blues, greens, purples, reds, whatever you can get your hands on. All right, let's take a look at our pop art piece of artwork that we are going to be making today. This is gonna be our finished product when we get all finished today. So in the intro, we talked about Andy Warhol's influence, and we also talked about how he had those simple shapes strong lines, bold colors, and he used repetition in his artwork. Anytime you repeat an item over and over and over again, that's repetition, which repetition also creates a pattern. So we have a pattern here, all right? Now in the past, we've also talked about whenever you are doing multiples or working in repetition, you wanna try to work in odd numbers. So in my picture, you'll see that instead of having just four, I've got five, all right? And also, on my flavors, I've added five different colors in there, all right? Okay, so let's get started. And I'm gonna kind of skip forward and kind of just explain to you what you're gonna need to have ready. Um, that thick piece of paper, your little six by six cardboard piece of paper, you are going to need to cut out your ice cream shape that you're gonna be using today. This is what we're gonna be using as a stencil, okay? Whenever you create that stencil, you have a positive and you have a negative, and we have cut out, so we are going to be using the positive part of our stencil, and we are going to start working on our project today. And how this is gonna work is very, very simple. I typically do not allow the shape to just be traced, but for this particular project, because we want to do repetition and because it is very important that it looks exactly the same, I'm bending the rules. So today, and only today, I'm gonna let you trace around your shape. So, I chose to do ice cream cones. Remember in the intro when we talked about that he used popular things that were popular in everyday life, like the soup cans or the movie stars that were really popular during that time. Well, I like ice cream. I don't get it every day, but boy, I wish I could. So this is going to be mine. You might wanna choose something different and whichever it is that you choose to do, that's fine, and that's what you're gonna make your stencil of, okay? All right, so we're gonna get started today. The spacing on your project today is very important, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a trick. Whenever you're spacing something out, you can measure it, which is always a foolproof way of doing things. 
I, however, do not have my ruler with me. So, something that you can do if you don't have a ruler, or maybe you don't have one handy, is that you can kind of learn to kind of space things out by kind of eyeballing it. So I'm going to teach you kind of a little way that you can kind of estimate it and a way that you can do it without a ruler. One thing that you can do is use those fingers, your pencils, other supplies that you have at your table. So one thing that I like to do is I will do like a thumb's width from the edge to my first image. And so that's what I'm going to start out with today. So I'm going to start with my first ice cream cone and I'm going to do it a thumb's width over to the side. And I'm just going to very easily trace around it. And as I'm doing this, go slow and take your time. It's not a race. Something else that I've seen some of my kids struggling with as they were doing this project is their stencil was wiggling around. And one way that you can make sure that your stencil doesn't wiggle around is that if you hold it really, really good. So I usually hold it the same way I would hold a ruler putting my first two fingers up on the top and my thumb supporting the bottom. And that way as I work, it doesn't wiggle back and forth because I've got pressure on it in both places. All right? Okay, so I've got my first image here. Instead of going to the next one, the next, the next, the next, I'm going to actually skip over and I'm going to do the last one. So I'm going to do a thumb's width again. So I'm going to measure out my thumb's width and I'm going to trace around that shape. And as I'm tracing, holding that really tight, the next thing that I want to do is as I'm getting my next one in there, this is where you kind of have to eyeball it and kind of look to see. If I put it here, am I going to have enough room? So usually I will use my finger and kind of scoot it over and kind of measure things out. If I do it that way, it looks like things are going to get cramped up there at the end. So I'm going to put them where they're going to just barely touch and I think that that will work just fine. So I have just kind of eyeballed it. So I'm going to continue to trace my shapes and I'm going to continue to let you trace your shapes. And once we get all five of your ice cream cones, if that's what you're choosing to do, we will be ready to start the next part. Okay, the next part is we need to add those five different flavors onto your snow cone. And the trick about this is whatever you do, you have to be able to do each, you know, four more times. So you want to really kind of think about it, watch what you're doing. And so whenever I do mine, I usually think, okay, I need to divide this up into five different shapes. So I just kind of look at my five different shapes and whatever I do, and I'm kind of going to do kind of like you would make um, kind of a wavy type of line. I'm going to do that because your ice cream cone, whenever they slop it on there, it kind of makes that kind of a shape. So I'm going to just kind of count it out. So I've got one, two, three. And then I'm going to come in here and do my next shape. And then I will follow in with my other ones. And I want to make sure that when I get all finished that I've got five different spots there because I want five different flavors. Okay? The other thing that I want to come in here and do is I want to put some type of a pattern on my cone. Cones look all different ways. You can decide what kind of pattern you want to do. Now, if you want to, on mine here, I've just done a little small kind of pattern, which kind of gives you the hint that that's what it's like all over, but I haven't put it all over. You're more than welcome to do your, your pattern all over your cone, and that's perfectly fine. Or you can just do it just like it's a little hint, all right? So I've got all of my cones done, and I'm ready to move on to color. So at this point, we're going to need to get out our fluorescent paints, and I want you to have at least five colors. All right, so our fluorescent paints are so fun to use and are so neat to look at. I love the colors. And basically, we're just going to start painting. So when if you're using the uh, temper paints like I'm using, you might want to water them down just a little bit because they're kind of gloppy. So when you start to work, you're going to have to kind of move that around quite a bit. So I wet my brush not a lot because you don't want it runny. You don't want it to look like a water paint necessarily unless that's the look you're going for. So we talked about how Andy Warhol used these just outrageous colors and most of the things that he made, he would modify the color and change the color a lot. So it would not be normal everyday colors that you would see things. So as we get started today, I don't want you to think about, oh, I want to make cookies and cream ice cream. 
I want you to think outside the box and I want you to think about, you know, you want to have outrageous orange or something strange like that that you've never had before that would be these weird and strange kind of neon colors. So as you get started, I want you to keep in mind you're going to be having these five flavors on top. You're going to be painting your cone a color as well and it's not going to be brown. <laughs> this is going to be a weird kind of cone. It's dyed a color, whatever you want to think about. Maybe it's dipped in a candy. I don't know. Um, but you're also going to need to paint your background. So you want to kind of keep that in mind because you don't want your cone color and your background color to be next to each other because they wouldn't be very different and it's not going to pop off like you want it to. So you want to really keep in mind what colors you're using and what you're going to use on your cone especially. It's okay if you use the same color up in your flavors though because it's just a little bitty area. All right, so I'm going to get started and I think I'm going to start with some orange. And I usually like to start on my ice cream first and I usually do every single one that I'm going to do that color. Now, we've been talking about pop art today. And pop art took place during the 50s and 60s. And so, I was wanting to share with you guys, we recently, at my school that I teach at, we recently had a 50s day, which was really, really fun. And we all got to dress up 50s and we had a guest that came in that um, sang 50s types of music and things like that. And it was really, really cool. We brought, they brought toys and foods and things like that that you would have eaten or played with or seen in the 50s. And that was really interesting. And it got me kind of thinking about, it would be interesting to know what were some of the things that were going on during the time that pop art came about. So we're talking about the 50s and the 60s. So I got to looking and there were actually some very interesting things that happened during that time. One thing was the Beatles. Y'all probably don't even know who the Beatles are, but you need to go find out who the Beatles are. You need to ask mom, dad, grandma, somebody, and you need to hear what the Beatles sound like because they were just too cool. And so the Beatles were singing and another person that you may or may not know about is Elvis Presley, and he was dancing Jailhouse Rock, and that was pretty cool. And Martin Luther King made his I Have a Dream speech. Towards the later part of the 60s, we landed on the moon. So pretty cool time in our history for all this to be going on, and not only was all that going on, but we had this new movement of art called pop art that was coming into play. And at first, you know, you have to think about before all this happened, that most artwork was very realistic looking. It was all the colors, they were painted the colors that they were supposed to be. And all of a sudden, pop art comes along and it's like out of sight. And people were like, what is going on? There was a lot of talk about, can you even consider this to be art? So it really changed the way people were looking at things. But when you hear about some other things that were going on in our history during that time, you can see that people's ideas and the way they were doing things were really changing. So it was probably a really good time for this type of movement of art to come along. All right, so we're gonna continue adding color to these. And um, as you're adding color, I want you to really like I said, think outside the box as far as what colors you're going to be adding. The other thing is really try to stay in your lines as you're painting. If you get out of the lines, we're going to try to fix that. That's what that big chunky marker is for. So if you get out of the lines, it's okay, don't panic. But you want to do your best to try to stay in the lines. Um, another thing that's a very good idea as you're painting is if you'll notice when I'm painting that I dip my brush in my color and then I do all of those that are going to be that color. And that just saves you a lot of time trying to clean out your brush and get all that done. So as I'm working, I'm just going to do all the things that are that color. I was very, as I was starting to work on our project for this time, it was very interesting to read about 
um, silk screen printing like Andy Warhol did, and I thought it was very interesting that it's so similar to the way that we have our, our t-shirts printed up today. Very similar process, and almost, I was talking to the kids about it, and almost everybody in class had something printed on their t-shirt, and I wore my pop art t-shirt today that has a screen print on it as well. And it looks kind of pop art, I think. That's why I wore it for today's show. So whenever you get dressed in the morning and you're thinking about what you're going to wear, I want you to think about Andy Warhol was the guy who got your whole t-shirt ideas going. Where would we be if we didn't have Andy Warhol? I would be sad because I like my t-shirts with stuff printed on them. All right, so as we continue to paint, I'm going to let you guys work on this for just a little bit, and we will be painting the background. And I want you guys to know that there's going to be some dry time with this, so you can't just do the next part of the project. Even though I'm going to show you the next part, you're going to have to let yours dry, because if you get your markers into this wet paint, they are not going to work good, and they will never work good again. So we want to let those dry really good, and we will be ready to move on to the glitter and the marker part and all that. So we are finishing up on my last fruity flavor. And after that, we are going to work on background color. Now, one thing I will tell you on your background color is remember that you want to pick a color that you have not used on your cone. And I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret. You'll notice on my paints today that all I had was pink, and I had hot pink, I had neon orange, I had neon yellow, I had electric blue, and green. But you'll notice that my cones are purple. Now, how did that happen? That happened because I mixed a color. And don't be afraid to try to mix a color. But you wanna be careful, because with your neon colors that you have, you really kinda of have to think about what colors you can put together and what colors are kind of going to make what. So you might want to do a little experiment and see what happens when you mix your colors together. And I can tell you for a fact that if you mix your neon blue with your hot pink, you're going to get this kind of a purple, which works great. Kind of looks like one of our neon colors, but definitely different enough so that it will stand out from the rest of what I'm doing. All right? Okay, so don't be afraid to mix your colors, especially for your cone. All right, okay, so we are ready to move on and start on our background. So for your background, I'm going to be using orange, which is what I used in my example today. So when you start with your orange, I will warn you, you're going to need to do two coats of this. So you're gonna do a full coat, you'll cover all your background, let it dry, and then come back, and then you'll do your second coat. The reason why we have to do this is because it kinda has there are parts of it that are more transparent than others. Some are very opaque and it holds the color really good and then others you can really see the paper color through it. So we want our background to really be nice and dark. And as you're working, remember that you want to try to stay in the lines as best as possible. It would probably be a good idea to have a piece of newspaper or some kind of a protective sheet of paper underneath you don't tell anybody, but I'm painting without a piece of paper underneath me today. I'm going to be trying to be really, really careful. But you can kind of get this on here pretty quick. And remember, I told you about how sometimes this paint can be kind of globby. So I kind of glob it on there, and then as I'm working, I just kind of slide the globs over. And that way I'm not left with all these big globs on my paper. I want it to be very smooth looking. And I'm going to work around my cones, and if you'll notice on my picture here that I'm up here right next to my orange that I used in my ice cream. But because we're going to be outlining everything, it's gonna be just fine. It'll stand out just the way we want it to. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda just pretend that I am all done. I've got my background all finished. And I've done two coats on my background because we want it to be nice and dark. And we are ready for the marker part. All right, so get out those big chunky markers. And we are going to begin. Clean off my 
brush. All right, we are going to begin kind of outlining everything. This is going to help our image to really pop off of our background. Not to mention, if you'll remember in the intro, when we were talking about Andrew Warhol's work, and we talked about those bold lines that he uses, as well as those bold colors. So when you're outlining, this isn't going to be just a typical outline exactly what you have. I want you to kind of use some, you know, artistic freedom, and I want you to really kind of think about making some of those lines really thick and some of them really thin. So when you're using your marker and you're trying to achieve that and you're using a big, thick, kind of chunky marker, you want to think about for the thicker parts, you're going to use the full edge here, and for the thinner parts, you want to use the tip of your marker, okay? All right, so we're going to remember that we are pretending that mine is all painted, all right? Okay, so I'm going to get started, and I'm just going to kind of, first things first, I'm just going to outline everything. So I'm going to just start with kind of the tip, and I'm just going to outline around everything. Now when it's, when you get into your other flavors and kind of separating the flavors out, that I want you to really think about how could you make it look a little different. We don't want it to look like you just outlined it. Anybody can just outline something. We want it to become actually part of the artwork. So how could you do that? So one thing that I did with mine is by making, by varying your thickness of your line. So, you know, kind of look at it and see. You might want to come in and add maybe some kind of curls or maybe even like a spiral line might be kind of interesting. Think about when you go and get ice cream, what does it look like? What kind of shapes do you see there? So as you're working, just decide which areas you want to make thicker than others and then you're going to go back and make those areas thicker. So you should end up with some, I'm going to do a little spiral in here. So you're going to end up with some that will be thin and some that will be thick. And remember that you, this is up to you, so you do not have to outline every single thing. So kind of think about that as well. I'm going to end up doing my edges up here on the sides a little thicker. And this is tricky to do upside down. It's hard to see what I want to change. I'm going to do some different types of lines in here. And don't forget also in our example that, we've shown, that we have shown you today that there's a little drip. So you can decide which, where you want to put your drip. If you want to put a drip, you know, you could put it down here on your cone. You could put it on the side. Either way, it's up to you. Now, as far as your glitter goes, we're going to kind of start talking about that as we're working today. Your glitter is up to you. You can kind of think about your glitter as maybe a topping for your ice cream, or maybe it's little pieces of candy inside your ice cream, but it's really just kind of, I love glitter, and I love, anytime we can add a little bit of glitter to our artwork, I just think that is really fun. And there aren't a lot of times when we can do that, but I think that if anything, pop art is one of those areas where we can definitely add some glitter because it was pretty glitzy. So as you're working, remember, just like Andy Warhol's prints and how he used that repetition, whatever you do on your first cone, you're going to need to be able to repeat it on the following ones, okay? So as you guys are working on that and getting everything outlined and ready to go, the last thing we're going to talk about today is glitter. So get that glue. I have finished my background. It's dried. I've done my second coat. I've actually already started. I started ahead of you. I already started working on my glitter a little bit, but I'm going to slow down and show you how to do it. You're going to need your Elmer's glue, and you're going to need lots of cool glitter. And I want you to remember, think about, is this going to be like, maybe it's little pieces of candy inside there, or maybe it's some kind of a topping you could even do. I mean, this is from your imagination. Maybe it's like some kind of hot fudge dripping off of your, your ice cream cone, and it's glittery. It's glittery hot fudge. So really use your imagination on this. You could do, you know, you could do some kind of a pattern, like little spirals. You could do little dashes, anything that's going to kind of create a pattern. Once again, kind of reinforcing that idea that Andy Warhol had of using the repetition in your work. 
all right? One thing that I wanted to go back and mention, don't forget to do those lines on your cones with your big chunky marker, okay? That's one thing we didn't talk about, and especially if you ended up painting yours dark purple like mine, it kind of disappears and you might forget about it. So don't forget to go back because that's a really good detail to our work. Okay, so we are going to start with our glue. Now when you're working on your glue here, you want to do a thin glue line. You don't want it so thick that when you take your paper and you're getting off the excess glitter that it drips down and it gets everywhere and it messes everything up. So you want to really do kind of a thin little line of glue. So as you're working, just kind of decide what you're going to do. I think I'm going to try some little spirals here. And you want to try, the other trick is to try to keep the tip of the glue out of the glue as you're working. That's a little tricky. And remember that maybe you can't see all of the pattern, and that's okay too. And then usually what I do, just like when I was painting, I go ahead and do all that I'm going to do that color. So I would go ahead and on my orange, I would go ahead and do little spirals on all of these. And remember that if your glue kind of dots up in places, you may need to go back and thicken it up. Sometimes you may have a glue bottle that is glue happy and it will just be getting glue all over the place. If it's coming out of the spout too thick, you know, you can always twist it closed a little bit and it'll kind of help you to control that a little bit. So as I'm going here, I'm going to just quickly do my last few little spirals here. And then I might want to come in and do something different for the pink flavor that I have here. And then I'm going to do my glitter. And when you do your glitter, you want to kind of be in a place where you've got a good clean surface. A um, piece of newspaper or something works great underneath you because you're gonna have some little stray pieces. All right, so on my orange, I wanna think about what color glitter do I wanna do. I could go all different kinds of ways, but I think that, I think I'm gonna do some blue because I think that that will really stand out and really look interesting. So I usually don't mess with sprinkling. I just pour <laughs> and then I can always put back what I don't need. But I do kind of try to use it sparingly because I don't want to make a big mess. So I'm just going to hit just the places where I've put my glue. This is why you want to work on just one color at a time because if I've already done my pink, if I've already got the glue on there and I go to try to put this blue on here, it's going to end up getting on to the pink areas too. So that's why you want to just pick one and do one color at a time. Now I've got my glitter on there. And usually one thing that I kind of do is I just kind of shake it around a little bit. It kind of helps it to stick to the sides. All right, now, the trick. I take my little bowl, my little thing of glitter. I fold my piece of paper very carefully, and you're still going to spill a little, and that's okay. Try to get it as most in the center as you can, and then you can just slide it back down in there. And then you've got your glitter on there where you want it. You got a little bit of spill, but not too bad. So I would finish up by going in and doing my pink, adding any other things I want to do. Something else that I kind of thought about at the last minute is it might be kind of cool to do some kind of a, a border around. So once you get this, pin, this finished, you could actually take this and glue this onto a black, solid black piece of paper. Really makes it pop, brings out those dark lines that you added into your artwork. Today's art quote is from Andy Warhol. My instinct about painting says, if you don't think about it, it's right. As soon as you have to decide and choose, it's wrong. And the more you decide about it, the more wrong it gets. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for today's lesson. I hope that you've enjoyed our lesson on pop art. This is gonna look fabulous when you get it all finished. Now, boys and girls, go out there and make some amazing art.